Okay, so now that we are done with our facial flexes for face posing, we can move on to hair and cloth physics. So to start with, let's change our uh, viewport display mode for the skeleton back to octahedral because it's easier to see them for um, things that aren't face posing. And first we want to identify what we want to have physics applied to. I usually only apply physics to hair if it's past a certain length. Um, and I would say that her hair right here is long enough to have physics, but on the rest of her head, it's short enough that I don't think it would be worth doing, especially because as you will soon find out, physics, uh, hair and cloth physics in the source engine is very janky. This is also optional. Uh, you don't have to do this on your model at all. So first we are going to add bones to her cape. So we are going to select the top of spine four, and then we're going to go to viewpoint, uh, right. And then we're going to press E after we have selected just the tip of this bone. We're going to press E to extrude the bone and we're going to put it where we want the physics to start affecting the cape. So I would say right around there. However long this bone is, is going to be the area that it affects. Um, so the shorter we make it, that means only this area is going to have physics and the longer we make it, this entire area will have physics. If you do a bunch of really tiny bones instead of a couple of big ones, it's probably going to look really weird. Not sure because I've never done that, but from what I know of how the source engine handles stuff like that, it would probably be really janky. In object mode, you can also hide the parts of the mesh that you're not currently working on. I'm trying to see, it just helps visibility. So go back to edit mode. So we're just going to do it again. Go down a bit, do it again, again. That should be good. I want the cape to start having physics from this point down. This bone, um, I don't want to have physics because it would probably look really weird. We are actually going to delete that bone. So I just press delete on my keyboard and choose bones. And there we go. What we're going to do is while we have this bone selected in edit mode, we're going to go to the bone tab and we're going to rename it to, it can be named anything you want, but it should be something short, preferably easy to memorize because we're going to be referencing it later on. So I'm just going to name this cape zero one, the same thing for all the other bones in the chain. Um, cape zero two. And now what we're going to do, it's a very mild form of rigging. It's, it's pretty easy, harder to mess up on stuff like this. What we're going to do is we're going to go back into object mode. We're going to select the cape. We're going to go over here to object data properties and look at the vertex groups. In the vertex groups, there shouldn't be any entries for the cape models that we just made. Okay, good. There are no entries, which is what we want. What a vertex group essentially is, is it is just a group of these things, these points. Um, it is a group of them that is assigned to specific bones. We want to add vertex groups for each cape bone. Uh, they will be empty, and then we are going to assign which parts of the cape belong to each bone, and that will be a vertex group. It'll make more sense once we actually do that. So first, before we do anything else, we are going to select the cape in object mode, go to edit mode, and then we are going to select the whole thing that we are going to give physics. And I did that by pressing L on my keyboard to select linked, so that way it only selects the cape and nothing else. And with these vertices selected, you're gonna go over here to this black arrow and you're gonna click remove from all groups. With the cape selected in object mode, we're just gonna click the plus on the vertex groups thing. And then the new group will be down here named group and we're going to name it cape zero one exact same name as the bones that we just made so this is the first bone in the chain and it is cape zero one I'm going to do that for all the other ones as well so cape zero one okay so we have all the capes uh cape bones listed in the vertex groups now but they are empty so now we need to assign pieces of the cape 
to each bone by selecting the skeleton, going to pose mode, selecting the first cape bone, going back to object mode, and with the skeleton selected, shift click the cape, and then from here, go to weight paint. How we are defining what parts of the cape we want to belong to this bone is we're essentially painting the parts we want it to belong to. So this indicates that this part of the cape belongs to this bone now. So now when you move this bone, this part of the cape is gonna move and I can show you that by going back to pose mode now and now it moves that part of the cape and as well as this thing on her chest because I accidentally got weight paint on it. So yeah, whatever the weight paint touches will belong to the bone that you have selected. So going back to weight paint mode, we're gonna undo that paint because we don't want this thing to be attached to the cape. If your character is all one piece, this is going to be significantly more difficult because it's easy to get paint on parts that you don't want to get paint on. So in that case, you're gonna go up to this little thing up here for text selection. Um, and this will allow you to select specific parts of your model that you want to be able to paint on. Uh, so for instance, we just want the cape. So I'm going to point at it and press L and it will select all the attached vertices. The paint will only affect the selected vertices and the unselected ones up here cannot be painted on no matter how hard you try. Uh, but these can't. So yeah, L selects uh, connected vertices that may or may not work for you depending on how your model was constructed. Uh, if it doesn't, you can use C instead. You press C and it brings up this little brush that you can affect the size using your scroll wheel. And then you just paint the selection like that. You can adjust the size of the brush using this radius slider and the weight itself using this. So the higher the number, the more intense the color will be. The more intense the color, the stronger the influence over that area the bone will have. We're going to set it to about, about there. And this is a one-sided mesh, meaning that normally if this actually had two sides to it, we would have to paint both sides instead of just one and have it affect both sides. So let's go back to pose mode and see if that is satisfactory. Yep, I'm happy with that. Um, you can also change bones by holding control and then left clicking on the bones when you don't have a uh, vertex selection enabled because that won't let you do it. So yeah, disable that and then hold control and left click to select which bone you're currently weight painting to. So this one we already weight painted, so it has the blue there, and then we're gonna go to this one. Same thing for each bone. But before you do that, one last thing. If you have weight paint on the same part of the model for multiple bones, so let's say that this part is weight painted to this bone, and it's also weight painted to this bone, so they both own the same piece of model, that is going to cause issues because it will cause that part to shrink and deform in a very weird looking way whenever that bone moves. You can use that to your advantage sometimes, but most of the time it just glitches out and looks weird and we don't want that. So under options over here, you can check auto normalize. So anyways, I'm going to paint this, going to paint that, and the bone's influence ends around there. And if you want to erase, um, you just drag the weight all the way down to zero, and then paint where you want to erase, and there you go. All right, so we can experiment with that later. We might need to actually make the influence more intense for each bone. Um, we can adjust that later on if we get it in game and it looks weird. Um, but yeah, for now, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. One thing I want to make incredibly clear, anything involving player models and ragdolls, anything just modding in general, is just there are a lot of variables. There are like an infinite amount of variables when it comes to making stuff like this. And really, there has never been a model that I've encountered that was just like 
standard, oh, I already know how to get all of this working in the Source Engine. Every model, almost every single model I've made up to this point has been kind of a puzzle, and that's kind of something that you're gonna come to expect. There's really no way for me to address every possible circumstance that can happen with your model, because every model is designed completely differently, and there's a different way that you need to approach porting each kind of model to Gary's bot. So yeah, the chances are you're not going to be able to just follow this tutorial like one to one and have everything work out. There's going to be things that you're going to need to figure out on your own. Uh, but luckily there is Google and there are a lot of people that can help you. I'm sure people can help you out in the comment section. But yeah, there's no way that I can account for every possible variation and variable. I will try to account for as many that I know of. So that's the basic idea of how you make physics bones, also known as jiggle bones in the source engine. We're going to do the same for the hair. I won't bother showing it because you've already seen. All right, so I have her hair rigged now and the vertex groups have been created automatically this time uh, i forgot to do it myself but i would still recommend you do it manually because i've had issues with that in the past and at this point we should be ready to export as an smd so we are going to go to this tab go to source engine export choose smd keep everything else same and then on export path we're going to click this little folder icon and you can either export to the uh, template folder that I have included under uh, compile folder template and just dump it right there. Or what I recommend doing is going to um, the compile folder template in the zip that I gave you and copying it uh, to a different location and then naming it whatever it is you're making. So for me, it would be Anna player model compile. Uh, I already have one right here because I did it earlier. And then under export path, navigate to that folder. And then once you are in the correct folder, just click accept. But before we export, we need to decide what parts of the model we want to be body grouped. This is kind of optional, kind of depends on your model. Like I said, there's a lot of variables. And it also just depends if you want cool extra features for your player model right now. So in Gary's Mod, if you're aware, there are such things as body, which is the feature where you right click on a ragdoll or in your player model menu and you go to body groups and you can like turn off certain parts of the model. So this is where we would set that up if we were going to do that. So normally I would just combine all of these pieces into one and then hit export. But if we want body groups and we want the ability to disable certain parts of the model, like her cape, for instance, we are going to need to keep those models separate. Um, so what I usually do is I usually make it so that, let me hide the skeleton here. I usually make it so that attachment can be disabled. So for instance, her shoulder pad, uh, her cape, her collar, uh, her little belt thingy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the pieces that I don't want to be uh, turn offable, like her actual body and hands and head. And I'm just going to select those and only those and then press G to move them to see if I have everything but the attachments. Okay, I didn't get her neck. Grouping more difficult than I anticipated. <laughs> okay. Can I grab just that? Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. So this is just her base model. I accidentally selected her shoulder pad. Actually, her shoulder pad is part of her neck thing. Okay, that's fine. We can actually work with that. So if you have something like this where two pieces are connected to each other as one, we're going to select it, go into edit mode, and we are going to enable wireframe and press C to get our selection brush. And we're just going to paint there. So we just want the shoulder pad selected. If you accidentally select a piece you didn't mean to select, just press middle mouse button, middle mouse button to deselect. We have just the shoulder pad selected and we're gonna press P, separate by selection. There we go. So now these are separate pieces. So now we can finally select the neck and the head and the hair and the rest of the body again. We're gonna do Control J to join it into one single object like that. 
and that leaves all the rest of the things as separated pieces um, that we're going to attach in the QC file in a bit here. So now I just need to make sure that everything is named properly. So this is her main body. It's currently named Anna Bray Pants. If you go to the object uh, tab, this is what it's currently named. And we're just gonna change this to lowercase Anna underscore body. I forgot to mention that the head needs to be a separate model typically as well because it is way too high poly to be connected to the rest of the body because that's just too many vertices in one model for the source engine to handle. Now make sure that the head and the tongue and the teeth and the eyes and everything attached to the head besides the hair, that is important. And there we go. Okay, that's good. So now her head is separate as it was already. I just forgot how we have head, we have body, and we have all the attachments which we still need to name in the objects tab. So this is her shoulder pad, not her coat. So we're just going to change this to Anna underscore shoulder. Uh, change this to, that's already named correctly, but just make things easier later on. Shorten it a little bit and name this Anna underscore cape. Do that for all the other pieces. By default, it tries to export the entire select or the entire collection as uh, I think a single object, which we don't want. So we're going to select all of these within the collection and drag them out like that. Um, unhide the skeleton. And we're just going to delete this collection right there because uh, we want all of these to be exported as separate models. Okay, cool. So just to double check before I export, make sure everything is parented to the armature and nothing is left behind when I move it by the pelvis. Okay, cool. One last thing before you export your model is to delete all of the face bones, if you have any, and the bones that are in your character's eyeballs, if you have any. If you did any face posing shape keys, it's going to mess up for some reason. At least that's what happened to me in the past if you don't delete all of those bones. So since we do have face posing on this model, I'm just going to go into edit mode and press C to choose brush select. In object mode, press A to select everything, including the armature. And just in case, I don't remember if I moved anything when I was working, I don't think I did, but just in case, I'm going to control A, location, rotation, scale, like we already did. Select everything again by pressing A a couple times, and then going to file, export, source engine, selected objects, eight files. Okay, that should take a little while. It took, didn't feel like four seconds, felt more like 10 seconds, but I don't know. So now that we have our model exported in its different segments, now we are going to move on to the next step, which involves using the old version of Blender. So I'm just gonna save this and close out of new Blender. All right, so open up Blender 2.79. And we are going to use this to open a blend file, which is the proportion trick script that I had you download. So go to open and navigate to the proportion trick script folder that you extracted and load the blend file proportion trick 2.7 underscore new. Okay, so what this is, is Gary's Mod by default tries to stretch your player model skeleton to fit the bone locations of the default player model skeleton. And as you know, we aren't using the default player model skeleton because the skeleton that I'm using in my character is from Destiny 2. All we did was rename the bones. So it's going to try and contort those bones to the proportions of the default player model skeleton because that's just how it works for whatever reason. So what this proportion trick script does, it'll perform some operations on our model to enable the source engine to load our player model without stretching the skeleton to the default player model proportions. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go up here, you're gonna click proportion trick, and then go to file, import, source engine SMD, and you're going to navigate to where you, you exported. In my case, I exported it in multiple bits. So first we're going to navigate to that folder and then we are going to start with the head. I don't think it actually matters, but I'm gonna start with the head and make sure to change this from append to target to make new armature and click import. Okay, so there is her head. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna click file, import, 
source engine. And we're going to change this back to append to target uh, because we are now attaching the rest of it to the skeleton that we just made. And we're going to shift select the rest of the character. Don't select the VTAs because the VTA files are what are, is used for the face poses that we made. And we're not doing anything with the face poses. We just need the model. So now we have all the rest of her selected besides the head because we already imported it. And we're going to click import. Okay, so there is the rest of her. And now you're going to go up here to the skeleton and you're going to double click and rename it to GG. Don't ask why, the, this is just how the script works. You need to name the skeleton to GG. Now that you've done that, you're going to select your skeleton by clicking on it in the uh, collections menu thing up here. And then you're going to click run script. Remember when we had those extra bones uh, that I was telling you about earlier and I said we would deal with it at a later stage? This is where we deal with it. The bones that we don't have, um, in this case we were missing a spine bone because the source engine expects uh, four spine bones and we only had three. The missing bone will appear as black. The bone that we were missing in this case is spine two and the bone that we have, which is the green one, is spine one. So you're going to click the black one and then shift click the green one and then click space and type in copy, copy constraints to selected bones. And you're going to click that. And now it will no longer be black. So that's what to do if you have missing bones. In the case of the neck, we had an extra bone which is not appearing in this. So that might mean that it will work okay. On the off chance that it doesn't, we're going to have to delete that extra neck bone and bind it to the main neck bone using weight painting, which I showed you earlier in the hair and cloth physics section. But for now, it doesn't appear that there are any other black bones. Hit A a couple times until all the bones are blue and then we're going to go down here and we're going to go to apply apply pose as rest pose a little warning thing will pop up here that's fine that doesn't actually mean that anything bad is happening and then reselect the bones again by pressing a a couple times and then press space and type in clear and you're going to choose clear pose constraints so clear pose constraints and the color will change a little bit. That's what we want. Next, go down here and from pose mode, go to edit mode and under view, go to right. And we're gonna go down here to the toes. This is These are the toe bones. And we're gonna click on this little thingy and change this to individual origins. Press B to box select and we're going to select both of the toe bones. And we're gonna rotate them until they're about as straight up and down as we can make them just by eyeballing it doesn't have to be perfect just until it looks right to you left click to apply and right here it'll give you the angle that you just set it to so we're going to click that Control c to copy it and we're going to press a a couple times to deselect everything to go up here to the ankle bones and we're going to press B to box select, box select the ankle bones, press R on your keyboard, and then hit control V and then enter. And that will adjust the foot and toe bones so that they are correctly aligned with the ground uh, once we import our model into Gary's mod. Let's go back to object mode. Once you're back in object mode, you're gonna go uh, down here and these are layers, which I don't think are in the new version of Blender anymore, but uh, they're here now. So click on the first layer, which is where we were initially. Going to deselect everything by hitting A a couple times and then go up here and click the armature again to select just your skeleton. And then up here, you're gonna click this, you're gonna change this to proportion trick two, and then you're gonna click run script again. After that, you're going to right click on any part of your model and you're going to go over here to the modifiers tab and make sure that under the armature modifier, the object is set to proportions. If it is, uh, then you don't have to do anything else. And now we're going to deselect everything and then press A again to select everything. And then we're going to press control L on our keyboard and choose the modifiers option. You want to go over here to the scene tab 
and then under export path we're going to make a new folder um, in our compile folder which is where we exported these models to begin with uh, and we're going to name it proportion trick compile so here is the original compile folder and we are going to click on this to make a new folder and we're going to name it uh, proportion trick compile and we're going to open that and then click accept select everything and then go to export scene export 11 files don't choose selected objects we need scene export that is necessary there we go so they have all been exported and we can close this and do not save so now in your folder you should have the original models and then you should have the proportion trick compile folder right here grab the qc file and the physics file and we're going to copy those and bring them over into our proportion trick compile folder as well as the head underscore vta file make sure to grab that and also bring that to the proportion trick uh, compile folder that's very important because that is what has our face posing data in it now is for the qc file editing <laughs>